Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to take a look at the best MMORPGs for storytelling and lore. And when I say best, I of course mean the best in my opinion. Before we start, I want to quickly mention that I've just made a brand new channel specifically for lore. The first video is coming out in a couple of days and it's going to be the story of Warcraft's Jaina Pridemore. If that's your kind of thing, then you can find a link to subscribe to that channel in the description down below. Anyway, let's get into our list that is, by the way, in no particular order. Firstly, we have World of Warcraft, which has its lovers and haters. It has those who are totally immersed in the story and those that cringe every time Thrall speaks. Though regardless of your thoughts on Warcraft lore, there's no denying that there's a huge, huge volume of it and that many people enjoy it. Personally, I'm one of the people who loves Warcraft lore. One of the bonuses of the game being so popular is the fact that the lore has been supplemented by masses of online wiki pages as well as novels and other published works. This even includes a very high budget film, though we're not going to go down that particular rabbit hole today. Regardless of your thoughts on the movie, WoW is a game in which it's pretty difficult to run out of lore to consume. It also has the advantage of being part of a franchise that started way back in 1994. So it has huge amounts of lore to draw on from previous titles as well. In fact, most of the better MMOs for lore seem to follow a similar pattern, or at least come from an already established universe. There are a couple of areas where WoW's storytelling falls short in my opinion. Firstly, you have a lack of spoken dialogue, and secondly, the storytelling isn't anything to get excited about when it comes to side quests. Though in my opinion, the main storyline is easily good enough to make up for this. Speaking of immersive side quests, it's difficult to find a game that does a better job of them than the Elder Scrolls Online. Every single quest, at least as far as I've seen, is voice acted, and it usually follows a pretty interesting storyline. Often you'll stumble across an NPC at random and realise two hours later that you've become immersed in a side quest that kicks the ass of the main story in many other MMOs. This is before we even consider the main quest line, or quest lines I should say. Like I said, I'm not putting this list in order as I don't want it to be any more biased than it already is. Yeah, it's obviously biased, it's an opinion based video, but I would say that ESO's main storyline is possibly the best I've played in an MMO. You also have the fact that everywhere you go you come across countless numbers of lore books, each of these containing stories from different periods in Tamriel's history. It can be a lot of fun piecing these together in game, but as with WoW, due to the scale of the franchise you can find plenty of resources online. One of these is the Imperial Library that gives you various storylines in full. Of course all of this isn't a surprise considering that ESO comes from the Elder Scrolls franchise which is famous for its lore. There are some limitations of course and I've definitely felt at times that the storytelling for certain quests has been a little flat, but overall ESO really is top tier when it comes to lore and storytelling. Next up we have Final Fantasy XIV, which I'll admit straight away doesn't feature the type of lore that I'm particularly interested in. However, that's a personal thing and it does provide incredibly deep lore and storytelling, and those who enjoy the Final Fantasy universe are probably going to love it. Even as someone who isn't big on Final Fantasy lore, I found myself really engaging with the main storyline, as well as my class specific story. And this was all despite the fact that the quests themselves can get pretty boring in the base game. This gets far, far better in the expansions though, and one of the big positives of Final Fantasy XIV is that they always seem to learn from past mistakes. Just consider the fact that they launched the game to massive success after the original version had been a total failure, and that takes grit. In terms of spoken dialogue, it's okay, though it would be nice to see it feature more heavily for side quests outside of the main story. Overall, it's definitely worth a look if the Final Fantasy universe is your thing. You might just have to be a little patient with it at first. But remember, there's a reason why it's such a popular MMO. Let's talk about Guild Wars 2 next. The Guild Wars franchise is kind of the new kid on the block when you compare it to the three titles we've mentioned so far, all of which have games that span back to the late 80s or mid 90s, whereas Guild Wars has only been a thing since 2005. Considering this, the amount of rich lore that they've accumulated in that time is pretty damn impressive. One thing in particular that stands out about Guild Wars 2 to me is the way in which they present that lore to the player. There's plenty of great cutscenes in game, the voice acting's a step ahead of what you see in most other MMOs, and the fact that your character even gets their own lines is pretty cool too. I will say that the story does feel a little too obvious at times, but there's also definitely been moments that have shocked me. Again, this is a game that has a healthy amount of lore resources surrounding it. Not to the extent that WoW or ESO do for example, but it still has a lot more than the majority of other MMOs. 
One criticism I do have is that the side quests are often lacking any form of story or lore at all, which can make them feel pretty grindy for people who require constant story elements to feel engaged in an MMO world. The cool thing about Guild Wars though is that unlike the other titles we've already mentioned, you can actually play the entire base game for free. This will allow you to get an idea as to whether you enjoy the story before investing any money. With this one, it's just about investing a little of your time. Now the next two MMOs I'm going to mention have a distinct advantage due to the fact that they come from two of the biggest fictional stories ever to be told. The first one is Star Wars The Old Republic. This game didn't do anywhere near as well as anyone expected, especially given the massive investment of $200 million to make it. Where you do see the benefits of this investment, however, is when it comes to lore and storytelling. There's a treasure trove of story available for those who enjoy the Star Wars universe, and the way in which the story is told is pretty impressive too. The voice acting is superior to the vast majority of MMOs currently on the market, and it's presented to you pretty much everywhere you go in-game. You're able to explore areas that you may have long read about in Star Wars novels and other resources, and it's just generally really cool to be able to experience that universe in MMO form. Unfortunately, the game does lack a little in other areas, especially when you consider its high budget. Though, if you're big into Star Wars, then you can almost play The Old Republic as if it's a single player game. That being said, there are plenty of people who love this title, so don't write it off just because the general consensus is that it's nothing special as an MMO. The second MMO that sits behind one of the most famous stories ever told is Lord of the Rings Online. This game is getting on a bit now. It came out in 2007, actually two and a half years after World of Warcraft, but it was never as successful and for that reason hasn't seen as much investment, which results in the game actually feeling as old as it is. That being said, Lord of the Rings Online is incredibly lore rich, as you would expect from an MMO that's able to draw from the deep running storylines of the Lord of the Rings franchise. If you're a big Tolkien fan and you're able to look past some of the pretty dated graphics and some fairly dated gameplay mechanics too, then Lord of the Rings could be pretty special for you. Just don't expect fireworks when it comes to gameplay itself. Though I do want to add that some people really enjoy what the game has to offer as an MMO. So again, don't go writing it off just because it's not one of the ultra popular titles. This video is starting to get a little longer than I intended, but I don't want to just point you to the obvious MMOs like everyone always does, so there are a few more titles that I quickly want to mention. At least when it comes to MMOs that might be worth it just for lore and storytelling. Firstly, you have the two MMOs that are set in the Dungeons and Dragons universe. These are Neverwinter, which is a more recent title from 2013, and Dungeons and Dragons Online that came out in 2006. If Dungeons & Dragons is your thing, then either of these titles could work out nicely for you. Neither of them have been hugely successful, Dungeons & Dragons Online for example only maintains a very small population, but on the flip side, due to Neverwinter being available on consoles, you can expect to find a lot more people playing there. The methods of storytelling in either of these games aren't exactly groundbreaking or fantastic in any way, but there's a pretty rich vein of lore to tap into, and both Neverwinter and Dungeons & Dragons Online do this to varying extents. Like I said, I don't want to drag this video out, so what I'd suggest doing is go and check in the lore for either of the two games and seeing if it's potentially going to work for you. We also have a few other games that I want to mention, that not games that I've played heavily myself, but from what I've read and from the recommendations of others, it would feel pretty unfair to leave them out. Firstly, we have Secret World Legends, which from what I've seen offers something entirely different in the story-driven MMO space. Rather than being involved in your typical high fantasy or sci-fi setting, you're actually involved in a shadowy war against the supernatural. The title certainly hasn't been particularly successful as an MMO, but the one thing that people consistently applaud is the game's storytelling. Like I said, I haven't played it, but I'm trying to be unbiased in this list and point you to as many games that might appeal to you as possible. Then you have RuneScape, which lacks almost utterly in storytelling, but it has far, far deeper lore than you might imagine. Just check out the lore section on the RuneScape website to see what I'm talking about here. Also, if you don't mind playing an older game and you've been enjoying Guild Wars 2, then you could consider checking out Guild Wars 1 and its expansions. I've heard from people that I trust that this game has some pretty immersive storytelling, so it's probably one that I'm going to check out myself at some point. Then finally, you have Star Trek Online, which if you're a Trekkie, might be worth checking out. Though I'll admit that this game is another one that I haven't done anything but read about because the Star Trek universe just doesn't really appeal to me personally. I'm sure there are plenty of other games out there that feature some great lore that might not be in this list, so let me know which games you would add in the comments down below. 
Hopefully between us all we can help someone find their perfect game world. Anyway, like I said at the start, I've just started a brand new lore channel with the first video releasing in a couple of days. We're going to be starting off with lore from the Warcraft and Elder Scrolls universes, but I definitely want to sprinkle in some other MMO worlds as well. So if you're interested in that, then you can find a link to that channel in the description down below. Otherwise, for general MMO content, you're already in the right place. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, you take care of yourself, and I look forward to seeing you next time.